Chao Chi Kue, Aztec goddess of lakes, streams, and oceans. Chao Chi Kue, whose name means she of the jade skirt, is the Aztec goddess of water as it collects on the earth, such as rivers and oceans, and so was considered by the Aztecs 1110 to 1521 CE as the patroness of navigation. She was one of the most important deities as protector of childbirth and newborns. Protector of childbirth and newborns, but she wants to sacrifice children. Interesting. Fast facts about Chao Chi Qua, alternative name, Shia the Jade Skirt, Culture, Country, Aztec, Mexico, Primary Sources, Codex, Borbonics, Florentine, Diego, Duran, Realms and Powers, Streams and Standing Water, Marriage, Newborns, Presides of the Four Son, Family Consort, Sister, Mother of Tolak, and Talquez. Chao Chi Kue in Aztec mythology, the water goddess Chao Chi Kue is somehow linked to the rain god Tolak, but sources vary. Some say she was the wife or feminine counterpart of Tolak and others she is Tolak's sister, and some scholars suggest she is Tolak himself and a separate goddess. She is also associated with Talaquez, Tolak's brother, or perhaps their children. In some sources, she is described as the wife of the Aztec fire god, Xutuquetl. Now, the first part that starts with the H, I have not found a pronunciation of this, of this word that starts with the H, Rahiwa Tatl. Yeah, I cannot find a pronunciation, so I'm very sorry on that one. She is said to reside in the mountains, releasing her water when it is appropriate. Different Aztec communities associated her with different mountains. All rivers come from the mountains in the Aztec universe, and the mountains are like jars, olas, filled with water that the spring from the womb of the mountain and wash down to water and protect the people. These two statues are supposed to be statues of Chao Chi Kue, and they are located in Amsterdam. God, I want to go to Amsterdam. For the statues, of course, definitely not to partake in anything else. The goddess Chao Chi Kue is often depicted in pre-Columbian and colonial period books called codices as wearing a blue-green skirt, as her name illustrates from which flows along an abundant stream of water. Sometimes newborn children are portrayed floating in this water flow. She has black lines on her face and usually wears a jade nose blood. Okay, I guess we're just gonna hop over the fact that she has children floating in her water. But in Aztec sculpture and portraits, her statues and images are often carved out of jade or other green stones. She is occasionally shown wearing Talik's goggled-eyed mask. The allied nautil word Chao Chi Kue means drop of water and it refers to the green stone jade and also used in connection with Talix goggles which may themselves be a symbol of water. In the Codex Porgia, Chao Chi Kue is wearing a serpent headdress and dress ornaments with the same markings as Talak and her half moon nose ornament is the serpent itself marked with stripes and dots. I hope you all are enjoying this, ser uh, this video so far, sorry, it's not a series yet. Um, if you do enjoy it, please leave a like. No, it's not over yet, it's kind of like an intermission. But um, yeah, if you do like this, we will make it into a series and we'll go over a bunch of different Aztec gods and uh, as well as Indian gods. According to the Spanish conquistador and priest Fray Diego Duran from 1537 to 1588, who collected Aztec lore, Chao Chi Kue was universally revered by the Aztec. She governed the waters of the oceans, springs, and lakes, and as such, she appeared in both positive and negative gauzes. She was seen as a positive source who brought full irrigation canals for growing maize when she was associated with the corn goddess Zelenin. When displeased, she brought empty canals and drought and was paired with the dangerous snake goddess Chica Mikoto. She was also known for creating whirlpools and big storms making water navigation tricky. Huh. I wonder if she had anything to do with that weird triangle out in the ocean. You know, the Bermuda. But I digress. 
Okay, no more meaning. Let's continue. The main myth involving Chao Chi Kui reports that the goddess ruled over and destroyed the previous world, known in Aztec mythology as the Fourth Sun, which ended in Mexicana version of the Deluge myth. Um, and yeah, these worlds, they, they believe that there was four or five different worlds previous to our current world. Four. Four previous to our current world. We're currently in the fifth sun. The Aztec universe was based on the legend of the five suns, which I just kind of explained on accident. Um, which is said that before the current world, the fifth sun, the various gods and goddesses made four attempts to create versions of the world and destroyed them in order. The fourth sun, called Nal Adol Tawada, or Four Water, was ruled by Chao Chi Kui as the world of water, where fish species were marvelous and abundant. After 676 years, Chao Chi Kui destroyed the world in a cataclysmic flood, transforming all the humans into fish. Or, talking about the Noah's Ark. Or, a little secret that all religions are wrapped together. Just saying. Now we're gonna move into uh, festivals, which is more like sacrifices more than they are festivals. As the partner of Tlaloc, Chao Chi Kui is one of the group of gods who supervise water and fertility. To these deities was dedicated a series of ceremonies called Adol K Willow, which lasted the entire month of February. During these ceremonies, the Aztecs performed many rituals, usually on the mountaintops, where they sacrificed children. For the Aztec religion, the tears of children were considered good omens for abundant rain. Very interesting. Not sure why that would work. I don't know. Maybe something to do with the evaporation of of tears i highly doubt it but maybe in some world maybe the festival month of february dedicated to chao chi kui was the sixth month of the aztec year called etzel kiwilisli it took place during the rainy season when the fields were beginning to ripen i feel like my brain is beginning to ripen with all these pronunciations the festival was conducted in and around the lagoons, with some objects ritually deposited within the lagoons, and the events involved fasting, feasting, and auto-sacrifice on the part of the priestess. Not sure if y'all know what auto-sacrifice is or was, but I don't, so we're gonna go over what auto-sacrifice is. What is auto-sacrifice? Mesoamerican sacrifice and bloodletting auto-sacrifice, bloodletting was the ritual auto-sacrifice or puncturing of a part of the body, either oneself or another person, generally the tongue or cheek for women and the penis for men, often collecting the blood on paper, which was then burned as an offering to the gods. Okay, I don't know if I need to hear that about the men. Okay, off of the auto-sacrifice, back to the festivals it also included the human sacrifice of war captives women and children some of which were dressed in the costume of chao chi kui and talak offerings included maize and the blood of quail birds and resin made of copal and latex and lastly but not least that's for sure children were regularly sacrificed to chao ki q sorry chao chi kui at the height of the dry season, just before the rains were due. During the festivals dedicated to Chao Chi Kui and Talak, a young boy would be sacrificed to Talak at the, on a mountaintop outside of Tenochtitlan, and a young girl would be drowned in the lake, Texaco, at Patalinan, where whirlpools were known to occur. Seems like they were quick to give up their children when they needed some water which can you really blame them i mean water is pretty important and your crops your food that yeah that's pretty important too so would i throw my kid in a mountain though or off a mountain or would i drown my daughter in a lake yeah i don't know but that that about wraps it up for this episode 
and my dog just jumped off the bed and I'm sure the mic got all of that and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.